Hello listeners and welcome to Fighting Failure. In this sort of live debate episode, I've brought back on Theo Ansel, if you remember from, from episode 10, where he joined us to talk about the meat industry, and also episode 11, where he replaced his show in a talk about wildlife conservation. So he is here to sort of take a devil's advocate stance about veganism and the meat industry. Um, so would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Theo Ansel, and today what I'm going to be doing is specifically talking about why veganism is a flawed system, and there are actually better tactics to deal with um, corruption and environmental issues in the in the industry of eating in general. The industry of eating. What an excellent way to start off. So, uh, I think you're going to make some points. I'm going to try and rebut them, so shall we see how that goes? Okay. So... Um, My opinion on the matter is that we should not be promoting veganism, we should be promoting welfareism. And the the core difference between those two um, kind of ideas is that welfareism is more about treating animals well, and you can still kill them and eat them, but if you, as long as it's done in a humane way and you ensure that they have a good life, it is far more, uh, in my opinion, effective than just not eating them at all. Because if you don't eat them at all, um, that also that means, number one, uh, though their uh, species will die pretty quickly. And also, number two, it means you can continue to eat meat in a more healthy and sustainable way instead of just outright uh, flat banning it. Um, and it, 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 of course, animal c- cruelty concerns are very important. So I think the necessity to dealing with these is... Um, instead of just outright banning it, is instead just creating a more sustainable and less abusive system. Okay, a few things to talk about. So this idea of welfareism is quite interesting, but you said, you know, a more healthy and sustainable way. So uh, in what way is welfareism, how does that make like the meat more healthy for us as consumers of it? Well, um, I mean, I guess, Sure, there are definitely still health risks with eating any type of meat, but also not eating meat also has a lot of health risks. For example, you can have a lot of deficiencies. It leads to more. It leads to Alzheimer's. Um, it can. Well, it, Sorry, it, it, it leads to Alzheimer's. Would you mind giving me a source for that? It has a higher chance to lead to, to Alzheimer's. I do have. A and source. what what's what's the reason for that? What um, deficiency means that I we get the Alzheimer's? See the deficiency. Let me just get this up. Um, the deficiency. Um, one second. Oh, fuck. There you go. Um, the deficiency is more to do, I think, with a lack of... Um, give me a second. I'm just trying to... I, I forget the exact... Okay, so while you're looking up the source for that, I think it's important to note that any diet has to be properly planned in order to, for it to be healthy. And, of course, it's, it's perhaps easier, maybe, uh, to... Um, have nutrient deficiencies on a vegan diet because you have... Uh, perhaps, you know, less concentrated sources of nutrients. However, it. it's completely possible also to have a very wide range of nutrients and be healthy. And there's many, many examples of vegans who are you know, very strong or, you know, mus- muscle builders, so they get enough protein clearly. And people have, you know, done blood tests after many years as a vegan and still have all the wide range of nutrients. So I think, you know, there's definitely a need for planning in both vegan and non-vegan diets. Um, so the the study is that veg- vegetarians and vegans have a much higher level of advanced glycation end products. So that means that it's not to do speci- it has specifically has to do with like being a vegetarian because you are not consuming meat and there's no subst- substance which can usually replace this. So it is a specifically vegetarian slash vegan problem and it leads to kidney disease um, and Alzheimer's, which is. Um, it also accelerates cognitive decline. Um, why um, this is why uh, the, um, so so actually yes it does have uh, health risks which uh, would be yes kidney disease and Alzheimer's um, specifically because you are vegan or vegetarian. That's interesting to see, and I'd like to see if there's more research than just body.io, but I'm not specifically doubting your source. And just looking at this page that you've got up there, like a few sort of the other things. Now, if you just go back to that page, because I actually want to continue looking at it. Uh, it's saying uh, ratio of omega-6 to omega-3. So, yeah, that is um, perhaps a concern because, you know, omega-3 is often found in fish, but there's also plant sources of omega-3 uh, like ground flax seeds is something I have quite a lot um, because you get the right types of omega-3 that then convert into other types that your body does. So um, amino acid deficiencies, are, I think, you know, protein deficiencies in general is, um, whoa, whoa, whoa. Sorry, I've just read something on here and it says, ever seen a vegan, impressive vegetarian bo- bodybuilder? Me neither. This has just made me concerned, oh, very concerned okay. because like one of the like Olympic gold medalists, uh, weightlifters were 
oh, ah, vegan, right? Uh, like very committed vegan. So I think that is completely false. There are definitely impressive vegan bodybuilders. I know you want the th- microphone. I'm not going to give it to you um, because protein is one of the easiest things to find from plants because, you know, where did the cows and the pigs and chickens and whatever get their protein from? It's from plants, of course. Um, and so it's just sort of inefficient to do it like that. Um, the... The article itself is layered in a bad way, but the statistical data is actually backed up, and it is it, it is a it is st- it is statistical. So it is made by scientists. It is uh, released by scientists in uh, different essays. It is uh, it, so it, the, the article itself may be structured in a way that is not, uh, which which is which is definitely subpar. That does not mean that the statistical data it it mentions is uh, subpar. And but your point about. Um, uh, you can get uh, omega-3 um, from plants. Yes, you can, but not in the same c- content and the same capacity that you could get it in meat, which can lead to a deficiency. And I'm sure a lot of people are not going to be eating the uh, the seeds you mentioned like in a mass abundance every day, but, uh, especially since they are not specifically homegrown in the UK uh, to the same capacity as you could supply everyone. So they will have to be transported abroad, which is a lot of CO2 and often is from uh, dire, uh, dire nations where animals might be displaced to grow these or governments are abusing uh, welfare to grow these okay so we're making a lot of claims about ground flax seeds um oh this keyboard's not plugged in making a lot of claims about ground flax seeds uh, and abusive welfare conditions in the production of ground flax seeds so yeah i think there's you know there's definitely stuff like that and this article also mentioning iron selenium uh it's and b12 is quite important because actually there's no plant sources of b12 uh but also um it'd be interesting to see well you'd be interested to know that actually in the uh, animal agriculture industry b12 is often supplemented to the animals so that we can get the b12 from that meat so uh you can see how the problem there and we can get b12 by growing it in bacteria that's the way that it is produced naturally and that's how cows get it and so on um but when they're fed you know concentrated soy of course it's much harder for them to produce b12 iron selenium iron is in high quantities in spinach you just need to have vitamin c to help you absorb the iron better because there's heme and non-heme iron uh, it also said something about it being a myth that uh, being vegan prevents you from cancer i don't really subscribe to any of these you know it's a, it's a health diet because it's not it's a lifestyle that you know avoids animal cruelty um so i'm not too concerned well I'm not too concerned about, you know, being vegan because it stops you from having cancer. I think it's, you know, important to have a wide range of sort of healthy, healthy plant foods. Um, So I think, yeah, there's definitely concerns, but I think it's very easy also to have, um, to have a well-planned vegan diet. And it's also very easy to have a very unhealthy meat-based diet with a lot of saturated fat and a lot of cholesterol, especially if you're having like lots of fast food. Um, And I don't think I don't think, you know, it's not healthy is much of an argument against vegan. There's, you know, I think the American Dietetic Association and the British Dietetic Association, like basically the union for dietitians, uh, have said, you know, it's healthy for all stages of life. The NHS says it's possible to be healthy on a vegan diet. So I think a lot of the claims are misplaced. But there's, the, there's also a lot of claims about a vegan diet being healthy uh, that are not necessarily true either. I, I, I agree. I think also we need to keep in mind that what I'm tr- what my, my specific main point is not that it is unhealthy to be vegan. It is specifically that eating organically and eating um, eating not not just organically but in a welfare way is more effective and also kills less animals than just eating entirely vegan. Interesting, interesting. So what makes you think that eating well actually before we get onto that point, I want to ask you a bit about like animal welfare so you said you know if they're killed humanely what does the word humane mean to you in a way that they su- they suffer no trauma or um are, they can be unaware of their death which is entirely possible despite claims that it is not um so you could you could sedate them towards their death and you or okay, you so what would you use to sedate them you could use any sort of tra- tranquilizer perhaps the way that you know uh, we euthanize humans who have assisted suicide in switzerland Sure, I'm I'm for euthanasia, so I don't see why you couldn't use it on animals. Yeah, so I think the problem there is actually that uh, when you want to consume the animals, there's there's a problem is that uh, tranquilizers or you know the medicines that are used for euthanasia, for example, potassium, because that goes like all through the blood vessels. Uh, it means that uh, it ruins the flesh, so you can't actually eat it. So I'm not. I'm, I'm... 
I mean, there, are, there. I think there, are, there are definitely there are ways. I mean, so I, I say I get what you mean, but also there are de- there are like there are there are animals that are tranquilized and then eaten. So in that capacity, um, I think that sure that you have to be careful with with tranquilizer with, with what tranquilizer you and use, and also you have to use it in a in a capacity in which you can still continue to eat the flesh. Um, but I think there's also definitely ways to cleanse it from the blood, and also there are definitely ways to. Um, use tranquilizers that will not necessarily ruin the flesh. Um, Interesting. Um, And so currently, the methods of slaughter in the UK do involve uh, stunning the animals so that they're unconscious when their throat is cut. Do you think that's currently humane, like the way it's done now? Is stunning by like electrocuting them until they pass out? It depends on the animal. So for example, pigs in the UK are generally killed uh, by lowering them to CO2 gas chambers, uh, which is, well, that's not, they're not exactly stunned, but... Well, make your own opinion about what it what it's like to be gassed to death. But uh, cows, for example, will be stunned with a captive captive bolt, which is a bolt to the head, which goes like injects into the skull and is supposed to make them unconscious. But often you'll have a failed stun. They could even go to slaughter uh, conscious uh, birds. I think uh, chickens are dipped into an electrical b- uh, hot water bath. But often if they like duck their head out and like they're swinging madly because they're afraid. Um, and then they could miss that and get their head chopped off again while alive, like with this big blade. I think yes. Um, I think that th- then in that in that way, instead of yeah. So I think that you could execute them in a more clean way. I, so if the issue is is that um, chickens are swinging around madly, you could have it in a way so that they don't feel any pain and uh, can go into it without having their head chopped off while they're still alive. I think there are definitely ways to do it with cows and pigs as well. I, I think that you can definitely pull it off to get an. Which is just, 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 just with more regulations and more like tech and more um, just kind of like you know, more more investments into like healthy eating of, of animals. I think that you can definitely fix some of those issues. Yeah. So let's go back to the idea of humane killing. What would what would you if you went into a thesaurus? What other words would you see like for humane? What's what's an, a few other ways we could define humane? You know? um, in a way that so like. For ex- not just in the context of killing, but just in general. Like if I went in the thesaurus, what would a uh, synonym of humane be? A, a synonym, a synonym of humane. Um, just like more human. It's hard to say. More humanity. More humanitarian. Um, so okay. More. Hu- is that going to be in a thesaurus? Um, I, I. So this is a stupid question because I cannot recite a thesaurus at you and then give you okay, a. Bunch. But no. What does the word humane mean to you? Like if you were to look in a thesaurus, or if you like have your mind thesaurus. What other words come to mind when I say humane? I'm not going to give you words that come to mind. I can give you a definition for what I think humane means. Okay, what does that? So humane would be uh, killing it in... Or no, not in the context okay. of killing, just in general. Humane would be a way in which nothing is hurt into any dire, uh, in any dire way. There are not extreme consequences for it. And especially there is... Um, like it's done in a way... Uh, I just wrote humane. Uh, I thought it would correct me, but it didn't. Yeah, there's Google for you. There's Google for you. Okay, here we go. Having or showing compassion or benevolence. Would you agree that's a definition of humane? Yeah, in a more civilized way in which there is compassion towards the animal being okay, killed. So you can see the synonyms here. Uh, compassionate, kind, kindly, kind-hearted, considerate. Would you agree those are synonyms of humane? If you're going to say that killing something cannot be considered as that, I understand the point, but I think you can. there are definitely w- more ways that you can be more kind in killing something. Okay, so let's look at it this way. Can we agree that it is possible to thrive on a plant-based diet? It's definitely possible. Uh, so therefore, does that make the killing of animals unnecessary uh, for food production no actually well yes in a perfect world it would but in a perfect world it would be unnecessary to kill animals to create food um yeah I, or in i think there are some cases where you could eat animals and it would not necessarily cause a massive problem but if in this world right now if you eat entirely plant-based products we've seen it like avocado cocoa you know cocoa produces uh, cocoa um so meat eaters don't eat any chocolate then no we do but like if you were for a vegan to say that they would that they they want to be uh, on a diet which causes less harm towards animals and uh, less harm towards um the world you would need to stop eating mangoes you wouldn't stop eating uh cocoa but I think 
think the thing is you're saying is that you're saying uh, to cause less harm to the world, you need to cause no harm to the world. But I think the point is that trying to reduce suffering as much as is practical and possible. So a lot of vegans, for example, also avoid palm oil because of the uh, environmental and animal welfare consequences of that as well. So I don't think just because it's impossible or just because some foods that are plant-based also cause problems, I don't know if that necessarily nullifies the idea of, uh, of eating plant-based foods where possible. I understand the point. I think picking and choosing. So, for example, soy, rice, maize, wheat, all of this for is is is, is, is which would be necessary to have a, a vegan diet, right? Um, not necessarily necessary, but not necessarily often necessary. a staple. Yes, they would be a staple of most diets. They are ext- they they have extremely bad consequences on the world. Even I think, for example, the wheat amount produced right now, the carbon emissions from that are worse than the amount of chickens. So should we stop, shall we continue to eat chickens and uh, salmon, which are produced even less, and, and stop eating wheat? I think that would be, would, would surely that would be more effective. Yeah, so we're going on to a bit of a more environmental discussion. But I think the thing with wheat is that like vegans probably eat only the most tiniest bit of extra wheat because wheat gluten is a good protein for making Satan, but I don't think I eat much. I think I eat less wheat than the average person. Um, and I think the biggest thing here is that it, with the exception of pasture-fed uh, cattle, all other animals that we raise for food have to be fed plants as well. And this is almost always soy. Vegans consume the most tiniest amount of the soy that's produced. And a lot is also you know, eaten by flexitarians or people who can't afford meat, perhaps. Uh, but almost all of uh, the soy that's produced, or vast majority, is fed to animals. Again, as I, uh, you don't need to necessarily feed the animals soy. You can have them on a healthy diet without continuously feeding them soy. Okay, what else would you feed them? Uh, you could, uh, you could feel just literally let them eat grass. Like, no, but I've just said only cattle can eat grass. Uh, other animals like a uh, chicken and pigs, for example, need to have other forms of nutrition. Well, then just use like uh, homegrown vegetables. You can definitely feed a pig a carrot. It's not. It's um. It's. N- y- y- there are definitely ways. There are a lot of protein in the carrot. No, but you could definitely get them protein without giving them specifically soy. And if onto the topic of of soy, yes, sure. Um, you, of, it, you, there are animals that eat it, and of course, the meat industry uses it in a high capacity. But um, when you when you talk about soy, you also need to uh, acknowledge that uh, ve- vegans and vegetarians do eat it, and I think they would usually eat it on a higher basis than most meat eaters. And even if, like, yes, pigs and chickens are fed on um, soy, which they actually usually aren't in the meat industry, they are fed on different suppletives and uh, lots of kind of more cheap, very cheap, very uh, disgusting. There's nothing's cheaper than soy. Yeah, but no, but uh, yes, there is corn in the U.S. So corn, but I would say corn has similar environmental implications to growing soy. It's it's a monoculture, basically. Yes, corn, but corn, corn is worse than soy in the U.S. at least. Okay, so it's actually it's actually worse. But I think the thing is, is that you know vegans and vegetarians eat more soy than uh, than meat eaters is true. If you talk about eating raw soy, but if you think about the amount of soy that is produced to feed meat eaters versus vegans and vegetarians. Um, in the, our current world, at least, uh, much more soy is used to feed vegans. Uh, sorry, to feed carnists, uh, because of course, it's needed to feed the animals that they eat. Like, uh, for example, in the UK, I'm almost certain that uh, chicken feed is soy. Uh, on feedlots, it's soy uh, and corn. You know, it's a mixture of corn and soy, right? Um, but also, you know, for example, I think the oat milk that I drink comes from oats that are made in the EU or Europe. Uh, and the soy in my soy yoga is also locally produced and it's not, um, you know, cutting down rainforests. And, you know, most of the rainforest deforestation uh, in, well, in the Amazon is to feed cattle. Okay, sure. So, but that's what, that's kind of what I'm, that's what I'm trying to go towards. We should eat locally. We should eat organically and locally instead of eating, um, eating abroad. I think that is more important. And, and also, of course, you should hi- hire regulations. We should get animals in better and better well in a better welfare. Um, I think we should be treating animals with a better welfare. We should be eating organically. And that is, I, in my opinion, that would be more sustainable, be more environmentally friendly. It would be more ethically defendable than uh, being a vegan. If you're, if you, I'm afraid I have to disagree there, right? Because First of all, like environmentally sustainable, you said in your opinion, it's more environmentally sustainable. I feel like, you know, environmental sustainability is something that's very much objective. Um, and we don't necessarily have the statistics right here, but like the United Nations is saying, you know, uh, plant-based diet is the most environmentally friendly diet. Um, 
and so uh then in terms of ethically defendable i i I personally don't understand how you can like ethically defend eating organic uh cows rather than eating not cows no not eating cows at all uh um so you're on this uh you're on this um uh, yeah, this BBC article, which is about why the vegan diet isn't always green. But actually, we did discuss this in episode five, and we had a big, long talk about this article. Uh, so you can go back and listen to that. We talked about this article, and yeah, it's true. The vegan diet isn't always green. Um, but, you know, the vegan diet is sort of a thing that a lot of vegans will get angry if you say, um, because veganism is a philosophy of not hurting animals, not exploiting animals, and we think that's ethically wrong. Um, but, or like, and it's true. And also, you know, on the whole, a plant-based diet is better for the environment. But of course, there are going to be edge cases like uh, this, you know, mangoes or avocados that are you know, produced that or almonds, you know, require a lot of water to make. But, you know, the Joe Rogan podcast is horribly anti-vegan. Oh, no, I, I'm not. It's, it's, oh, it's, it's not pro Joe Rogan. It's just an article about Joe Rogan because it's the independent. So. Okay. Um, yeah. So that article, we discussed that already. So I don't think there's too much merit to discussing it again. There's, you know, on the whole, the meat industry is bad for the environment. There are edge cases like pasture fed beef where it could potentially have some environmental benefits, but even those have been overblown by Alan Savory and Nicola Han Nyman and the like. So, yeah. I would rather eat organic meat than uh, rice produced in countries where animals are being displaced to grow it, where workers are being abused to grow it, and where uh, there is ma- it's basically the meat industry. But for workers, and let's not also forget the fact that plants have feelings. They are not in the same capacity that a human will, but they- no, Plants don't have feelings. Oh, no, they certainly do. They do. So what, what makes you think plants have feelings? Plants don't, so they, they can't think, right? But they- Okay, so how do they fe- have feelings? They, but they can definitely feel pain. What makes you think that? Well, so I think so. What scientific source thinks that plants have feel pain? Actually, I can try. I find this hilarious. Plants don't feel pain. Uh, oh, it's this Vorschach keyboard. You're not going to be able to type on that. Oh no, that's also not the back face button. <laughs> Hold the microphone. What do you want me to type? Plants do feel pain. I'm going do, no, do, 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 do plants feel pain? Do plant, oops, plants plants trees feel pain? Feel pain. Why trees? We don't cut down trees. Um, Given that plants do not have pain receptors, nerves, or a brain, they do not feel pain. Actually, no. Uh, I th- no one is sure, but they can definitely feel sensations. So the, in, in the fact that they would have a sensation, that also means that there is the possibility to have feel pain. And actually, scientists are unsure about whether plants can feel pain. And if you are, let's say I am unsure whether you would feel pain if I punched you, I shouldn't punch you because if I were to, then that would still have the chance of me uh, inflicting pain. Okay, so the plants feel pain argument is one of the stupidest arguments in veganism, so I can talk about that quickly. So the first thing is like Britannia is a reliable source hopefully uh, Encyclopedia Britannica um, and it says that plants don't feel pain or it's unlikely that plants feel pain because they don't have pain receptors they don't have a central nervous system they don't have a brain they can't process emotions or fear or pain in the same way that we can and definitely not in the same way that you know cows and pigs and chickens can Um, so it's if you think about it like a plant you know Mrs. C. Gren right it can respond to stimuli in the environment sensitivity that doesn't mean that it can feel pain in that way so you know i've, I've seen this research about like an ultrasonic scream is emitted that doesn't mean that they feel pain as such so i i don't you know a group of scientists suggest that plants feel pain that like a group of scientists out of how many scientists if you think about it, like what's the reason that we as humans feel pain right it's because we need to like say if i didn't feel pain like maybe i suffered from a b12 deficiency and lost uh, the ability to feel pain in my legs and then you know i stepped on a screw and i couldn't feel it then i wouldn't know to remove that screw uh and it would mean i'd get injured very easily so uh whereas plants like they can't move around in the same way so it wouldn't actually be evolutionary helpful to feel pain Actually, yes, it. So, number one, yes, it can. Um, number two, they, they don't need to move around necessarily, but they can emit it through ultrasonic noise. And it's also a sign for other plants to hear it. So, um, just to bring up the study from Science Times, which is reputable um, about science, um, researchers best tested tobacco plants and tomato plants by not watering them and cutting off their stems. They then recorded their response with a microphone that was placed 10 centimeters away. In both cases, the scientists found that the plant began to emit ultrasonic sounds that were between 20 and 100 kilohertz, when they, which they believed could convey their distress to other organisms and plants within the vicinity. Well, this, what, when the stem of a tomato plant was cut, the researchers found it emitted 25 ultrasonic 
ultrasonic distress sounds over the course of an hour, according to the study that was published in Life Science. And with tobacco plants, it was 15. So um, this suggests that the plants could have experienced pain from not being fed and then being eventually killed because they are emitting noises from which were only there because they were being starved and then they emitted an even bigger noise when they were literally being killed. Um, so it, like this is, um, this is pretty reputable that plants could indeed feel pain. Well, it seems like plants do emit an ultrasonic noise when they're in a distressing situation, but given the lack of a central nervous system or a brain or any other thing that would, uh, you know, show capacity to feel pain or have a conscience or feel emotions, I th think it's very unlikely that this ultrasonic signal actually means that they are sentient beings that can feel a pain as an emotion uh, in, and in a distressing way that humans and other non-human animals do. Um, and I think the prevailing scientific opinion is that plants don't feel pain. Uh, and I think the fact that they emit an ultrasonic noise doesn't actually show that they feel pain because, they, as I said before, and I'm going to say this again, they don't have a central nervous system. They don't have pain receptors. Um, so I think it's quite unlikely. But even if they felt pain, it's a null argument anyway because uh, veganism as a diet um, uses far fewer plants because you're just growing the plants and eating them directly rather than growing the animals which you have to feed a huge amount of plants to just to get a small amount of animal uh so i think it's it's a null argument anyway because vegans a fewer plants are grown for vegans like if you think about a cow even if you don't grow soy for it like think about how many little plants it's like you know, little grasses it's chopping the stems off so I, I doubt plants feel pain i think it's very unlikely but even if they do veganism is reducing the most plant suffering it's unclear whether plants cause pain, and I understand your point that, yes, animals do eat plants, and sure, uh, vegans do take plants directly, but I actually think there, there, there are definitely differences in a diet between a meat eater and a vegan, because where vegans, vegans will more rely on, on international products being sourced to them, and they will rely on different types of products than um, the meat industry, which are actually similarly, um, often similarly, destructive. For example, the avocado, cocoa, uh, almonds, etc. are all almost nearly as environmentally destructive as animals. Um, oh, yeah, I, d I haven't seen the statistics that far, so I doubt it. But I can tell you one thing, which is that actually being shipped across the world doesn't really mean that much. So there's a source in episode 20 that I, I cited from Our World and Data, very reputable, uh, which is about, you know, the carbon footprint of food and how much of that comes from the transportation and it's like less than 10% for almost all foods. For avocado, it's bigger, but that's actually only because there's less carbon footprint from making avocados. So yeah, I think, don't, I don't know what you're doing, but so, oh, oh, it's Joey Carbstrong, is it? Okay, so, so this, this is a somewhat controversial article about whether veganism actually causes more animal death than no way no, no I, I agree that there is no way but it might actually bring up some good points about the flaws with veganism specifically and why maybe eating organically is a more sustainable approach than um just not eating meat at all and eating abroad for things from like eating lots of um soy and maize which you can eat in the stead growing locally so um He's just reading the source here. I so I think we're past the plants will pain argument. And now we're on to uh, the fact that maybe a vegan diet kills more animals. Um, and I'm just going to preempt an argument you might make, which is about crop deaths from producing soy, wheat and the like, which is that because we eat fewer plants um, or fewer plants are grown for us, that therefore fewer crop deaths are produced. Obviously, crop deaths, you know, it's a problem, but it's unavoidable really it's not practical to avoid any sort of crop that could have potentially harmed an animal in the making in a way that is avoidable to uh, avoid eating something that was produced with the express purpose of being killed like you can be 100 percent sure that when you eat pork that a pig died for that uh, you can't be 100 percent sure when you eat soy that a small mice might have gotten mixed up in a combine harvester so i'm not so wait so so okay so vegans are against the killing of animals in general right Veganism is a philosophy which seeks to exclude. Oh God, I messed that up. Veganism is a philosophy which seeks to exclude, as far as is reasonable and practical, the exploitation of animals, something like that. So, would that include killing rats and rabbits that might eat crops? Yeah, um, it's just as much as is possible to reduce the suffering, right? But you might be killing. So, let's say. Uh, there are a thousand. There's like a horde of rabbits that have been there. Horde of rabbits. I don't know. I don't know what, what what do you call a bunch of rabbits? 
uh, uh, fine, a bunch of rabbits. Um, like I'm not sure. Like what the what is the multiple term for a rabbit? I don't. Let's look that up. Keep talking. Maybe like a. Yeah, I think it's. Keep talking. Anyway, if you have like a hundred of them and they are living outside your farm and they come in and eat all your crops, uh, you might be. Like if you're supplying it for people, you might be, there might be let's say there's 15 people that you are feeding directly with your crops and you need to feed them, um, 15, and then so but the rabbits are eating your crops and the 15 people are starving. Should you kill the 100 rabbits? A colony of rabbits. A colony. Should you kill the colony of rabbits of 100 rabbits or should you keep the 15 people alive? Um, because then we get into iffy water, right? Is what what is a human life worth compared to a animal life? I think a human life is worth more than an animal life. Is a human life worth 10 animal lives? I'm not going to quantify it like that because it's an extreme situation. It's not necessarily an extreme situation. I, I think I think what, I, what I'm trying to say is basically, uh, wh where do we draw the line for what is something just and justifiable? Because uh, people seem to differ over this. And there's been I've not been given a necessarily clear answer ever about where do we draw the line between killing animals and then killing and then not killing animals for the sake of keeping them alive while letting something else die because when you get into the utilitarian ethics of philosophy it gets uh, uh, utilitarian ethics of veganism it gets quite hard to like necessarily figure out where where is what and what is where that's interesting because i think veganism is very much a kantian sort of uh, philosophy which is the idea it's wrong to harm animals it's wrong to uh, eat animal products and it's wrong to especially kill animals for food or exploit animals for entertainment um food being entertainment get, considering eating animal products is unnecessary um and in fact do you agree with, do you agree with that that uh, eating animal products is entertainment because eating animal products as you know you said earlier is uh, in an ideal world unnecessary for us to thrive as humans i wouldn't call it entertainment in any way um we so, so if, if we're going to call that entertainment, right, there are lots of religions and cultures that specifically use meat because it's part of their tradition. We have, so if you're going to say that their, like, literal culture is entertainment, then I suppose, sure, it's entertainment in that regard. I don't think it is. I think also there are people who need to eat meat for a specific health reason. Who? Uh, so I think you could have a deficiency in a, sp like, so if, say you already have a pre-existing deficiency in B12. Who has a, um, well, actually, that's an interesting point is that a lot of carnists uh, have a B12 deficiency as well. So, you know, people are always like, oh, the vegans don't have B12. But you, you only find that, uh, you know, people who eat meat can even have B12 deficiencies, but that could be fixed while still being plant-based uh, because you can get B12 supplements, which are derived from, as I said, like bacteria um, and the like. Most B12 supplements are from animal fat, especially for vegans. Um, well, not especially for vegans, because vegans don't eat not, B12 not, from animals. We get it from uh, from bacteria. Not especially for vegans, but about 95% of the market for B12 supplements is made of animal fat. And That's because 90% of the market for B12 supplements is fed to animals. Sure, but B12, B12 supplements uh, made from bacterium are, are not marketed on the same bacteria, level. Bacteria, plural. Back, fine, bacteria. Uh, are made from bacteria are not marketed on the same level and they are also not bought on the same level as 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 meat based um animal fat based b12 supplements even by vegans is kind of how i'm the, how well, I'll, I'll tell you one thing which is that no vegan would deliberately buy a b12 supplement derived from animals um and you know there's definitely a lot of like vegan b12 supplements for example you know, i have nutritional yeast which is like this cheesy sort of nutty yeast flakes that has like a b12 and folic acid and stuff um uh, which is which is good um so anyway, I can't even remember what topic we're on. We're on the topic of crop deaths mainly. Um, so yeah, vegan is very much a, a Kantian sort of thing is that, you know, it's wrong to use animals for entertainment because that's ultimately what eating animal products is. Um, yeah, <sighs> would you like to say another point? <laughs> so I guess I guess we disagree in that regard. I am not a Kantian. I'm not, I'm not a deontology, de deontology deontologist i am not a deontologist i'm a utilitarian so that in that i i want the maximum amount of happiness for everything so with the maximum amount of happiness would also include animals right so if either being all treated badly then that is clearly not the utilitarian approach because um i think i read this somewhere if we were to kill uh humans in the same rate as animals we would all be dead within 19 days so yeah but that's i don't see how that's a useful statistic because animals are constantly being bred to fulfill the demand for meat yeah, so what basically but what I'm saying is that there are more animals than humans, so therefore there, are, there is no more, surprise. There there is more pain being created by killing them than uh in, in start putting them in terrible conditions than there would be for humans. Uh so what I what I am saying is basically if we can ensure good conditions and then basically 
make make less less cows and less chickens breed less ch cows chickens pigs salmon etc in in terrible conditions um and over like overpopulation of them to the extent that like none of them are happy all of them are depressed all of them are, have are serious health conditions all of them are in extreme pain all the time we remove that and they are living happy lives and people aren't aren't being as exploited anywhere near as much to make this if land's not being exploited anywhere near as much and animals are not being exploited anywhere near as much and people are still able to continue to eat meat i think that would uh, eat more organically even that's eating or more organically in my opinion is the more you util utilitarian approach than eating so eating organically from an environmental perspective is definitely beneficial because you're reducing the amount of pesticides and fertilizers and chemicals that are being put on the land but i don't see how that has anything to do with animal welfare it has to do with animal welfare because animals so usually so when you are eating mass processed meat it is usually not from like right next to you it is usually from a specific like so uh i think there was, so there was like 20 meat houses in the u.s or something like that there's only like 20 meat warehouses there's not many so they're being transported to 350 million people well clearly <laughs> that's not organic that's not local uh, but i think you're confusing what the term organic means organic just means the way in which the food is grown it doesn't have anything to do with welfare it doesn't have anything to do with how local it is i i uh i, I think it organic has to do with the welfare of animals yeah i think what does it have to do with welfare animals organic is just means you don't use chem chemicals when you're growing the food well if it's beer it, it means to have it natural it's not natural to no organic doesn't mean natural organic just means the way that it's the food is grown without chemicals natural also doesn't mean anything at all right uh no Sorry. actually so if we are going to I can't use your keyboard, but uh, I think natural. Uh, just look up organic definition. Um, I think when you go, you come to the word natural, you would assume that that is directly correlating with um, living in the life that would be most suited for them, which would be most happy for them. Uh, it is not. You would not. An organic life for a cow would not be locked up in a, a room being fed chemicals every day. Uh, with organic, a food produced by organic farming. <laughs> Oh, so organic. Related, yeah. So here we go. Produced without the use of chemical fertilizers, pesticides, or other artificial chemicals. There you go. Um, That's the definition. It is also it, it's also um, a synonym of natural. So it, in that synonyms, pesticide free, additive free, chemical free, non chemical, natural. Here we go. Natural. Yeah. So I think it's natural in the sense that you know chemicals are natural, but it, it especially legally, the term organic has nothing to do with animal welfare. Uh, well, actually. Talking about chemicals, animals are fed chemicals, and animals are doused with chemicals. So, for example, they take a lot of ammonia, they take a lot of uh, uh, other chemicals, and that's w what they primarily use in the meat industry to make sure they have a very specific taste and can be preserved and are, like, basically easy to transport around. So, in that regard, yes, they are completely unorganic because they are covered in chemicals from top to bottom in a way that organic meat uh, i mean i mean that um homegrown local meat would not be but you know every farm is local to somewhere i don't think that has any again the term local has nothing to do with animal welfare you know if you're living in the middle of alabama chances are you're local to a chicken farm that is like a mass factory farm like local is it there's a lot of these buzzwords that are thrown around you know like all natural gmo free organic uh cage free free range right especially in terms of poultry farming that mean nothing in terms of animal welfare yes so i agree that a lot of terms are basically like girl boss for feminism it doesn't mean anything um i i, I think what I, what i'm what basically what i'm trying to say when i say local is grown near you so it's not being transported like hundreds of miles it's also not being done in a way so that you you are getting it from uh, uh emerging countries that might have abuses of human rights to create these it is uh, also uh, yeah see so people wouldn't be like profited massively it wouldn't be like pretty disgusting how it's made it would be made loc it would be made like in in your local vicinity in a high condition with uh with low animal uh with, with yeah high high hum like very very humane it would be very like healthy for the animal and it would not include mass suffering it would not include mass torture i mean we all know that you know killing an animal unnecessarily is very healthy for the animal but i i want to sort of touch on the human rights thing that you talked about um and you know for example to the poultry industry in the u.s there's a, a lot of human rights abuses there maybe not human rights abuses per se but uh um you know horrible horrible working conditions especially in slaughterhouses and you can think of the sort of trauma as well from killing that, so many animals so I, I don't think you know the meat industry is very good for humans either and you know it's it is a problem for sure that, that there are human rights abuses across the globe but uh you know ultimately 
a lot of the grains that we grow are fed to animals and even carnists eat a lot of grains as well. So I, I don't know how much weight the human rights argument holds per se. I think, well, I, so well, I, 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 I th- I'm pretty sure rice is one of the most grown uh, things in the world. But you know, like you can have fish sashimi sushi and that has rice too. You can't feed animals rice. No, yeah, that's true. So you, you're, so they would not be. It would not. There would be if 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 a meat eater stopped eating rice because they were against the humanitarian issue of it, then that that would be like in a vegan continue to eat rice. That so that I'm not saying that like the meat eater would be more right because they continue to eat meat, but the, in on the front of rice they would be in a more advantageous position because they are not eating a rice that has been like most rice is made in China, made in Vietnam, made in. Uh, countries like around that area and it is not produced in the well to be kind is not produced in the most um humanitarian and not in the most like very kind um conditions they are mass produced they are done with sweatshops they are done with young child labor they are done with basically anything they can get their hands on it destroys animal environments it destroys um it destroys soil it destroys a lot of this basically just to grow a ton of rice very uh efficiently so i think that 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 for example is a is in a in uh, is is an example of where um that would be like have serious weight yeah so veganism is is a lifestyle and it means you know you don't eat animal products but you also don't wear animal skin and uh, you don't well as far as possible like we don't refuse medicines that's illogical but you know you wouldn't use like shampoo that's been tested on an animal for example um and i think in the same way that if you're going to apply this logic about avoiding rice because of humanitarian reasons you're going to have a big problem with you know what, that phone that you've got where is it oh. it's over here that this this you know motorola phone you know where's that produced i i feel like you know a lot of those countries you mentioned there, there's a big problem with human rights abuses in those countries uh, and I doubt that's limited to rice. So I feel like it's a bit of clutching at straws to say, but rice is bad for the environment. Not only do most carnists eat rice, but uh, a lot of products that are produced in countries like that do unfortunately have a lot of humanitarian issues as well. Um, and I think if you're going to stop eating rice because of humanitarian reasons, you probably also want to boycott anything uh, produced in China, by and large. Well, yeah, that would be... So I, again, as I was... I, I think you should... Either so, um, so I think I th- I think it does. It's not cl- clutching at straws because when you're talking about wanting the welfare of animals and the welfare of the world to be better, of course you need to be talking about uh, grains and vegetables as much as you uh, as as like in in the same way that you would talk about meat. Of course, meat is a worse issue, but to the to the uh, degree that a, you would just ignore them because they are not meat, I think that is completely ineffective and uh, I, I don't see actually a lot of people talking about like the moral implications of eating rice and yes I agree carnists eat rice and so I'm not trying to make the the idea that uh, that you should uh, that so as I've so I'm gonna go back to my point earlier you should eat locally um, that is so in that case you would uh, be if you were going to be eating rice it would be local rice it would not be rice that was produced in these places. yes uh, you know there's big paddy fields in the Lake District no, but you there's could, not. No, there's not. Uh, but you could, you could, like, you could definitely create conditions. You could set up greenhouses. Like, it's like there are definitely. It's not impossible to create rice in the UK, and it. Well, just- yes, but you know we have the botanic gardens somewhere over there. I think somewhere over there is the Botanic Gardens and the Botanic Gardens have a lot of tropical plants. You know, we went to Kew Gardens once, a lot of tropical plants there. It's possible, but I think there's a point to be made of economics, right? I think there's, there's you know, good reasons to eat seasonally, but ultimately transportation makes a very small part of the emissions of any food, really, um, because it's compared to the emissions from producing the food, it's it's minimal and it's really something that we shouldn't worry about transporting soy across the world. Um, we should more worry about what's the footprint of that soy uh, from its production, uh, really. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you could make rice in the UK, but what's the economic argument for that? Like, there, there really is none. It's much cheaper to ship it uh, from the UK, and probably even uh, 
maybe this is not right, but probably even more low carbon to ship it from those countries where it's produced because shipping is such a minimal carbon footprint because it's so bulk um, compared to heating a greenhouse and watering a greenhouse in the UK. I'm not sure if that's necessarily true, but it could be... What is wrong with the white balance on this camera? Um, it, it, that could be the case. And I think talking about economics, I think it'd be worth considering uh, the economics of this welfareism. I think it's almost quite elitist to say, you know, we should only eat the best quality meat. And I feel like there's, well, there's definitely no way that the current level of meat consumption and meat production could be sustained on a welfareism diet um and i think a lot of people who claim to support animal welfare and only buy organic meat or whatever you know if you go out to kfc i don't like i don't know have you ever been to kfc um yes but that like with- kfc definitely doesn't have high welfare chicken no i i and i i completely agree so what what i'm what i'm i'm not encouraging everyone to go out and have three meat meals a day and i think the use of like personal attacks against me for eating kfc is a very dumb argument because it's very sure. it's very anecdotal and it proves nothing on the statistical level i think um what what i what basically what i'm trying to say is you you can eat okay so number one if you're supplying the greenhouse uh, greenhouses by okay, look, i'm gonna stop you here i don't want to talk about whether or not you can grow rice in the uk but i think from an economic standpoint i don't know if it's going to be really economically viable to produce a huge amount of meat in a in a high welfare manner i'm putting that in quotation marks because i don't personally believe that it can ever be high welfare to raise an animal for meat but uh i think you know uh there's a, there's a really a fundamental conflict of con- conflict conflict of interest in the production of in animal agriculture in general because the companies that are raising these animals are doing so for profit they they are commodis- com- commodifying the bodies of these animals and the, and the products you know the, their secretions basically uh, and i think there's very much a conflict of interest is it that it's cheaper and more economically viable to treat animals badly and put them in bad conditions and not care about their welfare and not pay for vet, vet bills than it is to actually care for it and i feel like that's a fundamental conflict of interest and what we're currently seeing at the moment is like a lot of humane washing which is where companies and you say oh all, all natural humanely raised which actually means nothing in terms of how the animals are actually raised so um a few things uh the first thing is that when that that is true that companies do this but it's specifically on a mass level you could not do that on a normal level because the thing is healthy and comfortable animals they gain weight faster they give more milk they lay more eggs they breed easier than abused animals so when you are farmers farmers like a normal farmer would be at more advantageous for them to look after their animals welfare than not it is only only economically better to do that if you are running a mass operation because then you have so many you've got so many you've got packed them so so thin that half of them half of them half of half of animals they probably have really bad meat you couldn't you probably couldn't eat it um i i don't know about that but half the animals not being edible but they definitely just do throw out a lot of chickens yeah they throw out a lot of animals because they are not of the like they are not of the already low bar for quality that they have set but it's, it's ev- evidently it's economically viable for them to treat the animals really badly and just throw out the ones that die rather than to treat them all well uh, um and the money that that costs to treat them well and then uh, raise all the animals rather than just throwing away the, the weak ones really and i think also in like in the u.s a lot of po- uh, poultry farms are actually like smallholder farms where you know tyson or whatever cargill rents out the like contracts out the growing to actually a small farm so I think that's an issue of monopoly because mm-hmm. Tyson and Cargill have literally got a monopoly on the entire meat industry. There's no way you can break through because they have so much money and so much control and so much power in legislative problems that is nigh impossible to basically do anything against them because that's how. But it what it is possible to do is to go vegan and stop eating these products and just mean that they won't. You're not giving them their you're not giving them your money, and so they won't breed as many chickens because you're reducing the ma- demand. You know, or you could collapse the monopoly and as i've said eat super practical well no it is it's definitely possible for example oxycontin from purdue pharma that was a big issue a while ago that was approved by the fda it was approved by the government but now uh, purdue has been dissolved because uh so many people were basically like we want to continue to like you wouldn't stop taking opiates because purdue pharma produces oxycontin that wouldn't make any sense but what you could do is you could speed out speak out against the specific company for its for its crimes and then you could take down the company instead of take and take down the monopoly instead of necessarily just going straight after like the source behind the source i think um and to continue um 
it is true that domesticated animals literally have a higher standard of life than uh, wild animals. In the wild, an animal will lay in its own feces. It will run into, it will hide inside bushes. It will um, be hunted down and brutally savaged by like other predators. And then the predators uh, when uh, will will like live their life uh, as like a pack, and they will often not have the highest living conditions either because they are not in like the most yeah they're not in the highest living conditions so I, I think it's it's almost i don't know it's kind of almost contradictory to say that uh that you if you when you raise an animal in a way that would be much more humane and much in, in specifically focus on the animal's welfare uh but also of course i mean of course it's uh, which which you have to be because that's what creates profit if you focus on the welfare that creates profit they grow don't know about that <laughs> that's not how it works in today's society Yes, as I said, that's because they are produced, mass produced. But again, healthy animals, they gain weight faster, they give more milk, they lay more eggs, and they breed easier. So in, in that regard, it would be far more advantageous to look out for the animal's welfare than necessarily... I wouldn't be so sure about the stuff about, you know, healthy animals making more. Because if you look at the meat industry, right, just like look at what's happening now, the animals definitely aren't healthy, but they are producing more and more milk. And I think that's, in fact, mostly down to selective breeding, really. It's down to just creating a whole lot of them. And you can do that very cheaply if you just have the capabilities to do so. If you can basically put more regulations so you no longer have the capability to just set up a monopoly and um, you, this, you have the capabilities to stop people from being able to abuse them in that way, then of course it's not going to happen. And then people will default back to looking out for the welfare of the animals because, again, now we're in that position. It's more, uh, in, in a monetary sense, it's more advantageous feels like a very idealistic scenario and anyway if you're gonna have the let the animals have a good life you're gonna be able to produce far less meat like can you agree with that uh w sorry what did you say if you treat the animals well you won't be able to have as many animals stuffed into the amount of space so you'll be able to produce less meat yes which is good because you shouldn't be in my opinion you should eat meat once or twice a month or maybe once every few months that's a that's if that's a far better alternative so that would be like eating meat as a treat right for enjoyment uh, not as enjoyment. I mean, so for example, there are definitely resources in, I mean, it would be, okay, so it depends on how you see it, right? I, I'm not going to speak for everyone and say, yes, it's a big enjoyment or say, speak, it's not enjoyment. Like I, I cannot make that decision for everyone. I'm not going to answer that question because as I, I do not represent the populace, I do not represent people. But talking for yourself. Talking for myself, it could be a treat. It could be just something like it could be like what, what like, anything can be a treat if you, if you think about it in the right way. Like if I was to like. I'm gonna do a poop. It's <laughs> such fun. There are definitely people with that mindset. Like it's 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 weird, but like there are definitely people who have that mindset. Like, um, I think I think just like saying like yeah, anything can be a treat. So I I don't see why treating it as like a a treat even like saying like making that generalization for the populace would be a necessarily helpful. Um, like if you want to be able to statistically prove and also be able to appeal to people on a humanitarian level. Telling them that they, that they like that they like to have a good time off eating and killing animals is number one probably not the best move and number two probably also not necessarily true. I think that there is definitely vegans like to say that 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 this might be true. I I don't know whether I I agree with that with that kind of line of thinking that because you you eat animals it is you default specifically to it is a treat so therefore you like it is for your personal enjoyment which it often isn't. Well, I mean, you can follow the line of reasoning here. So if you think about it, right, you, you've agreed that, you know, uh, you don't need to, it's, it's unnecessary to eat animal products to survive as a human being, right? And so therefore, the only reason that you eat the animals, like other than perhaps practicalities, um, is, or just conventional cultural tradition, right? Ultimately, it all boils, what is wrong with the white pounds? Ultimately, it all boils down to that you eat animals rather than plants, because they're tasty, right? I, so number one, it's just saying conventional cultural traditions. Like, we, we throwing that away like it's like a it's like a, like a small remark. No, that is like literally for billions of people on the planet. That is that is what they do. That's what that's reasons why they would eat meat because of cultural traditions. Okay, well I'll come back to culture later. But if 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 then you're saying you know you eat meat because it tastes good, um, because if it didn't taste good you probably wouldn't need to eat it because you don't need it's not like you know medicine you don't need to eat meat to survive so uh, the only like you can boil it down to right that you, you only eat meat because you want to or because it's it tastes good so uh 
that means that you're basically saying that uh, the sensory pleasure, because taste is a sense, the sensory pleasure that you get from consuming animal products uh, is worth more. You're valuing that, that sensory pleasure higher than the suffering of the victim, which is the animal. I, I think I actually disagree on this one. I think, so for example, you would have like red wine once a month that has like small health benefits, which- Since when? Uh, no, having like a glass of red wine a month does have small health benefits. I think it improves your cardiovascular- this sounds like dodgy science. It's not dodgy science. Either. Don't Google it. You're going to find a source that will back you up, but that doesn't oh, necessarily I, I, mean anything. It is, I, I was told this by my... We'll, we'll go with this. We'll go I with this. I was told this by my biology teacher. So, like, whether... I, I don't think my biology teacher is lying to me about, the, like, the, the health effects of red wine. I think it's the same with meat. You can... There are definitely small health effects step whole health benefits from eating meat like once a month like oh yeah for sure for example if you eat beef once a month you might get some good b12 and iron that's easily absorbed by the body i'm not denying that beef could have health benefits but the, the thing is is that the beef doesn't come with no strings attached it comes attached with the with the suffering of an animal and considering that you don't have to eat beef to get those benefits like you don't have to drink red wine once a month to be healthy um it just like you don't have to eat beef once a month to be healthy just because it couldn't be healthy eat beef once a month i don't think that validates it, especially in a moral sense but like does it come from animal suffering i think that's what i'm what well I'm yes in the society in like the way that i'm proposing an animal would have a good life and they said it would literally well, beef cattle are uh, raised for about two years or 18 months before they're slaughtered but in, in, uh, in the wild well i don't know about the wild because cattle are very selectively bred but if you let a beef live a beef god if you let a cow live out its life it could live for probably about 10 15 years in the wild and cows roll over their own feces they get serious sicknesses they die very they can get serious problems that you that could otherwise be fixed on a farm so in in fact there are often aren't because it's not economically viable but what they if you make it again it is often economically viable to have cows in a good well or any animal no honestly it's only like middle and upper class people who are buying the super high welfare cow meat like people in, who are less privileged or don't have can't afford it pr because it's going to be more expensive they won't be able to afford this high wealth i mean well as you and then as you've said of course you don't need to, to eat meat right so um like it, it's i i'm not saying we should gatekeep it for the middle class but i'm also i'm also like also i think definitely a lower class family could afford to buy like eight pounds worth of meat once once a month like it's not as a treat as because it's enjoyable it, as I've said, it might not be a treat. It could be cultural. It could be for health benefits. And, and I know you said- but You can get the health benefits probably more cheaply from a multivitamin. Well, if you're eating B12 every day for 30 days to, to compensate for the same amount that you would get in one meal from a cow, I don't think that would be economically viable. And of course, of course there are other health benefits to eating cows, which are not just a B12, but like there, there's a bunch of nutrients and minerals and stuff like stuff like B12 that you can get in high doses from like animals from eating. Yeah, especially the beef liver, I think it's quite nutritional, isn't it? But yeah, like like we've said, it you don't need to eat the cow. So ultimately it's either a matter of, uh, of convenience or a matter of enjoyment. In both cases, you're valuing like your time or your, your sensory pleasure over the life of an animal which has suffered. I, I, again, I don't think I agree. It could be a literal, as I've said, could be do with cultural tradition. It could be to do with health benefits, and I know you've said the health benefits can be fixed by um, things. But we, you keep talking about economic viability as an option for people. Well, it might not be economically viable to get to try and make up for all the different health benefits from instead just getting it from one thing one time. Um, like, I don't know. I think it would come out as cheaper to have a uh, get all the nutrients on a plant-based diet rather than a uh, meat-based diet. But I think we'll go past that point for now. You've talked a lot about culture and. Um, are you saying like like just because something's cultural that means it's moral? No, but so you don't believe in cultural relativity. Okay, so relativity. What so f okay? So, so thing one, I think there are definitely a set of underlying rules. So if a culture believes that it's okay to go around and eat people, like that is not fine. That is not okay. I think there are definitely though. Like you do, we should if like. If, the, if you're like an Indian and you come to the UK and suddenly we're like, no, you can't celebrate Diwali because we've decided that you, there are all these things that you can no longer have, which are traditional issues in your, in your nation. Well, that's like, that is clearly basically just- What's immoral about Diwali? Nothing's immoral about Diwali, but like if I were to gatekeep a random, 
like tradition because for for some for like a reason that doesn't really have that much bearing like i'm not i think the question i'm asking is does just because something's cultural does that make it moral like not should we gatekeep traditions nothing like <laughs> we want to get into moral rev- relativity like we can get into like i think therefore i am is any of this even real like I, no i i think <laughs> we, we don't need to get into like we can get into the philosophical aspect if you want i don't know that so i don't think so number one you can't define cultural as moral because then that yeah because then you would be justifying practices like female genital genital mutilation for example is cultural in some places but that doesn't make it moral or maybe there's some culture that does cannibalism i feel like i've heard a story about that but i don't know um yeah not just that you'd be invalidating other cultures by deciding which culture is moral so of course yeah. um cho- choosing cultures as moral is not good i think letting co- cultures that have inoffensive practices carry out these practices because it's good for them and it's good for like it helps them it makes them happier it, it um not just happier but it, it brings people closer together i think I don't see. I don't. I don't personally see the harm. Yeah, I agree. I think if we allow cultures to have inoffensive practices, you know, like celebrating Diwali or you know, um, that, but I feel like that's not the case with eating meat just because it's cultural. Because uh, you know, eating eating meat isn't inoffensive. I don't think because there is a victim involved. Um, so I don't see how just because something cultural that justifies eating meat and especially just because something's cultural in other areas why that justifies for us as people who aren't members of that culture to justify eating meat why would we be eating meat on the behalf of the culture that's not what i'm saying what i'm saying is people specifically from that culture like okay so um i think that in cases it can be inoffensive i think there are definitely cases where it is extremely offensive to eat meat like so if you're eating from mcdonald's that is an extremely offensive way to eat meat because you are getting it from places where chickens are literally stuck into a pen there's hundreds of them they're like basically they they are literally cannot walk because they're they're so heavy that their legs crumple the chickens, yeah. yes it's, that's the way 99 percent of chickens are raised in the u.s yes but the, you as i've previously said if you get sick ch- chicken from the supermarket it's very likely from the same conditions as stuff you get from kfc and mcdonald's in the u.s yes specifically because um there's a very different system than what is in europe because in the u.s uh food company there's a lot more it's very neoliberal and so that there's a lot of not much regulation on companies they want to keep it free they want to that's kind of what the u.s is like they want freedom they want liberty and so that so in that regard they think that just letting monopolies of on the meat industry is okay because except for tech companies yeah, except they seem excited to regulate those. They do seem excited to regulate those. Off topic, though. which is I you know probably good. They should be doing that for every company, um, not just tech. Mm-hmm. Yeah, in fact, that comes very nicely back to veganism because that's the idea of cognitive dissonance, which is the uh, you know if the U.S. government is saying you know we're going to regulate this area but not regulate the other area, it doesn't really make much sense because you're applying one set of standards to one thing and one set of standards to the other. And I feel like cognitive dissonance is a big thing with the argument for veganism which is that we value uh dogs and cats we'd never want to eat a dog or a cat we wouldn't want to abuse a dog or a cat or we wouldn't want to you know if we had a pet parrot we wouldn't want to stuff hundreds and thousands of parrots into a single cage and there's the idea of cognitive dissonance which is that you believe one thing and you apply that to one animal but then you apply a completely different step set of standards to a different animal with no actual justification of that surely it's also cognitive dissonance to uh specifically focus on eating meat instead of also eating crops like rice which are produced in terrible conditions and also contain lots of workers abuses and also d- directly affects lots of animals as well surely that's also cognitive dissonance well i think there's a difference between what's intentional and what's n- not intentional so if you know you're driving down a road and there's a dog comes up um and would you know swerve into a bed of roses to avoid hitting the dog if okay so but no that's that's a terrible analogy because okay, sure <laughs> Um, the, the 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 bed of roses has not been created by like killing like, by like with by child labor. It, it, yeah, I understand your point, but I think that there's a point to be made about you know what is intentional and what what you very much can be sure you're funding. What is this? Carnivoresvegan dot com is that the source you're citing? Oh, gosh. Uh, no, this is this is the source I'm finding. Okay, I'm, I'm sorting uh, the, the Guardian. I'm sorting. I'm sourcing okay, yeah. Independent and BBC. Uh, these are the three ones that are most. Okay, never mind. Um, but yeah, when you when you eat an animal, you can be a hundred percent sure that an animal has a die for that because you're literally eating their flesh. Um, and you know, there's the idea of intentionality, like you did something um, intentionally, and that makes it wrong. Whereas you know, if you accidentally, if if you know animals accidentally die in crop production, or um, right, what's what's avoidable and what's unavoidable. Um, and you no, know, you could stop eating rice, but um, ultimately, like avoiding 
supporting any product that could have anything to do with human rights abuses is unavoidable. And even with veganism, right, you can definitely avoid uh, products that have been tested on animals, um, with the exception of medicines, of course, and you can avoid wearing animals and you can avoid eating animals, but you can't necessarily avoid, you know, the, you know, maybe an ox pulled a plow in some of the wheat that you're eating. Like, that's unavoidable, really, and that's not something that anyone could ever hope to just for. But I think it's a matter of intentionality. I disagree. So I think that, so yes, of course, it's a matter of intentionality, but you know, if an accident is repeatedly happening and wow, the accident is like, it's really bad and it keeps going on and it keeps going on. I don't know, maybe there's a trend and the trend often in these places is that literal, like child labor is being used to make this. Animals are being displaced from their environments and then die because they don't have it. They are not used to the environment they have uh, because the ever expanding wheat field, uh, wheat field, the ever expanding corn fields, the ever expanding uh, rice fields. There. Just... Why? Why are these fields expanding and expanding? Um, but not because. So I. Th- I mean, for corn for corn and soy specifically it's because of an increased demand for meat and the increasing of the animal population much more than it is of the human population it's because there's more people on the earth and i don't and especially a rise in meat consumption especially in asia as well well i think actually the fastest growing uh fastest growing crop in the u.s is corn which is often for biofuel actually episode 17 yes corn is used for everything in the u.s so um you already talked about this on number 10 so we don't want to go over this again but yeah but yeah so basically also i i mean for example um, there is high population growth in places like Asia. Uh, There's also high meat consumption growth. Sp- yes, specifically with Muslims. And I, so in my opinion, uh, as I've said, um, of course, the more these crops are being used to feed animals, um, I don't think we should be producing these many animals. I, th- is, I, I think it's unfair to the animals. It's really like you are being born into a world where you are like literally just being built to be tortured and uh, but that's the same even if it's a high welfare high welfare animals that they were born into this world they were bred into this world just so that we could eat them even if we raise them well they're not being tortured though and i think the other point to make is that in, in the wild animals are often not in a very good welfare so it, it, like they are they might be in a worse literal worse welfare than they would be like i think like so i think the cats, but they get to live out their life as well. Quantity versus quality, though. Like, if you have two years, like, say I have, like, a 50-year life, but it's really good, and someone else has a 100-year life where they're depressed, and they have continuous illness, and they can, like, sometimes not leave their house, and they are, are paid, like, a low job, and their brother committed suicide. Like, I don't know. I don't think I would... Okay, sure. So there may be problems with the welfare of animals in the wild, but we're not exactly, like, worried about all the wildebeest in the, in the Serengeti, right? Um, no. I don't think that justifies, you know eating meat but just because animals in the wild don't have a good life i think we should be worried about these animals though in the same so so we're gonna go and you know like put all this wildebeest in a special place where there's no lines to eat them um so so i think my my opinion of the matter is like you know you have um so i don't think like the entire world should be monitored but there are natural parks there could be people who are there to make sure that the animals are okay natural parks are meant to be natural right so that's what you're talking about is the, the place where the animals might not have high welfare Yes, so they might not have high welfare, but I think also um, there is definitely. I don't think that I, I don't think it, there will be that much of a problem with someone going in and checking up on an animal like once every once a year. Uh, tons of animals. I don't know if that's necessarily plausible. It is possible. It's been. Can we just like on a quick side note? Can we both agree that zoos are horrendous for animal welfare? Yes, they are terrible. Good. Glad to get it out of the way. Um, okay, so we could go on about the yeah. Places where, like, there are like places, I don't remember what they're called, but there are sanctuaries? places. Sanctuaries? Yeah, sanctuaries. That's Well, actually, vegans are very fond of animal, farm animal sanctuaries where you rescue uh, hens and pigs and stuff from slaughter um, and instead take them to a sanctuary. They can live out their life in as natural a way as possible. Of course, selective breeding yes. permitting. Okay, uh, l- let's look at this document here and let's move on from this point about rice because I think we're not going to get very far with that, but I want to see if I can debunk any of these other points you want to make. I'm not necessarily, so as I said earlier, I don't necessarily agree with this. I have taken some more... Yeah, you're playing devil advocate, really. Yeah, I've taken some of the more controversial arguments for like, for example, from Carnivora Aurelius. Um, like, honestly. Sh- surely a very unbiased source, which surely. provides lots of facts and definitely does not re- refer to veganism as literal bullshit within the article. So, um... I need to tag this um, episode as explicit now. Thanks. I'm sorry. Uh, or you could just beep it out, but... I cannot be bothered to edit this episode. <laughs> It's yeah. not even an episode. It's like a special debate. Yeah. Um, I th- so I don't agree with everything in here. I think I just put this down because I thought it was in- interesting. So if we scroll up a bit, I find this graph interesting. Ooh. B versus livestock deaths. Twenty eight. Carnivoresvegan.com. So actually it's from animalsmatter.org. Well, that's the livestock deaths from, which is this 
portion. Also, the the annual survey is literally from a okay. website about it. Yeah, sure. So I think that the statistics are not necessarily wrong. Um, sure, the the supplier of the statistics may not be like, but like I like a person on the right could supply a like a, a very deluded person could actually provide a good statistic and it would still be wrong. But they they would still be. Let, let's move on. Okay. Yeah. So, as you can see. Um, the 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 relation towards livestock deaths and bees killed, bee, the death of bees are far far higher. Uh, bees actually providing very good environmental uses, but also they're animals, so they they do bees do feel pain. Bees do feel um, they have sense senses. Um, here's, the, here's the graph. Hopefully you can see it. So yeah. So um, if you look, I don't think um, at all. Cows are eating berries. They're not eating almonds. They're not eating tree fruit. They're not eating melons. They're not eating avocado. They're not eating grapes. These are all foods that are what the bees are being used to pollinate, and uh, uh, by and these are mainly foods that like would be consumed. Um, that you would eat them if you were a vegan, right? Because these are these are non-meat foods. You would also eat them if you were a carnist, because that's normal. But okay. so a few things to spot with this graph. First of all, it's talking about the total livestock killed, but it's not taking into account uh, deaths of fish, which would take the livestock killed number or the animals killed for human consumption up into the trillions. And we're currently on a scale of 50 billion. So that's the first problem with the statistic is that land animals make a very small portion of the animals that are killed. Um, in fact, so many fish are killed that we have to measure in tons rather than in single lives. So yeah, I think actually Use, use of commercial bees is a huge problem and this is also why bee, uh, sorry not bees vegans don't eat honey because um, of problems in the beekeeping industry and one of the big problems with commercial bees is that or I don't know about commercial bees that are used as pollinators but in the um, honey industry it's almost entirely well it is entirely honey bees because they make honey other bee species do but we use honey bees right um, I don't know what species of bees are used for uh, that sort of uh, commercial pollination but uh, honeybees actually pose a risk to wild bee, spe wild bee species because they compete for nectar and the like um, and so it's actually a problem that's one of the environmental problems with honey farming and I think it's also a problem with commercial bees is that the reason that we have to uh, use the um, commercial bees rather than using you know bees do exist naturally that do pollinate plants right and they would naturally pollinate almonds tree fruit berries melons avocado grapes wine well they don't pollinate wine they pollinate wine grapes wine. but anyway uh, another problem with this with this source um, but yeah it's it's interesting um, um, but I think it is a problem that I would agree is a problem is commercial bee pollination. But I think the reason perhaps that we've decimated bee species is because of a lot of crop production and a lot of animal agriculture is decimating the environment for natural bee species. Um, so in fact, animal agriculture is in, is actually what's in part fueling the problem with uh, bees being killed. I, so I think that... W so, well, actually, if you look at that, so the reason why bees are dying here, which is the commercial bee pollination is things that your regular livestock would not eat. And to continue with that, I also think it's... Well, but the reason that we need commercial bees is because we have decimated natural bee populations because of crop and animal farming. And as I said, a lot of crops are fed to animals. Yes. And the way that we could fix this I don't think it would be by veganism. I think it would be specifically by growing local because you... A lot but, you know, everyone is local to somewhere. Like, what, what does growing local have to do with whether or not natural bee species are decimated? Because you, a lot of issues is that they're being moved around like countries. They're literally being trapped in boxes and sent around. And then yeah, and that is an animal welfare issue as well. Yeah, so uh, that that's also what leads to a lot of the deaths because they are they're being moved around the countries and their their welfare is not being looked out for because, of course, you can basically kill them in a high quantity if you can breed them. Yeah, I doubt that government recognizes them as sentient yeah they don't recognize them but uh, yeah. lobsters are still allowed to be bored alive and they are recognized as sentient by the government let me see if i can fix this camera it's a bit. Not really ridiculous. it really is it really is but i yeah again i don't think crabs and lobsters are like suffer and they, they really do suffer as well but like that's that's probably disgusting i mean it's it, oops i stopped filling okay i think I think the interesting thing about that, though, is we're more cons a lot of people are more concerned about like crabs and lobsters because it's direct. It's right there. They can see the lobster. Yeah, cognitive dissonance. Yeah, it's cognitive dissonance. Yay. Yay, we're back to it. Um, no, so yeah, I think um, what you would, you would, so a lot of this is not being eaten by uh, livestock. Um, yeah, it, a I lot think the causes of cause of needing to have commercial bee pollination is because of livestock farming. Yes, but no, that would, that's no law, that, that was a, issue that caused this this is now a symptom i don't think that yeah, it's a good point like how practical is it to fix this issue by being vegan um and so two things i want to point out is that vegan is not utilitarian as i said it's a philosophy that it's wrong to animals as far as it's practical to prevent that suffering um and so we're not so so concerned about the specifics um 
or the utilitarian argument. Um, but also uh, one practical argument is that as the world's pictures to vegan, uh, you need like a lot of land is going to be freed up. A lot, a lot of land. Maybe not as much as some vegans claim, but a lot of land will be freed up just because you're not housing the animals and you're not growing the soy and corn to feed those animals. Um, and so this means that you free up a lot of land and hopefully with good care uh, that we can in, in redirect like meat industry subsidies to instead uh, pay perhaps pay these farmers to take care of this land in a natural way that reintroduces wild bee species and other natural things to make the ecosystems better. And I think that's beneficial both environmentally and from an animal welfare p- perspective. And then we can reduce the number of bee deaths because we're reducing commercial bee pollination. Okay, I agree with that. I also think, but I but I mean, like you know, um, until where? What if we kill all the bees before that because we've been just been moving them around in boxes and we've been like treating them? Very- well, commercial bees are of course bred. So killing them isn't an issue for the bee makers. It, but like the thing about it is it's the thing with animals. Like we kill billions of animals a year, but they're, they're not going extinct anytime soon. No, but I think isn't it slightly different with bees? No, because you can breed bees in the same way you can bead, and because you know you just need one queen bee, and boom. That's true. Um, but there, I think the issue is is that there is, as you said, only one queen bee. Where to, if you have two cows they can have intercourse and just have a baby uh if you have two but in, in fact you might be i don't know you probably all know this but maybe the listeners don't is that uh often artificial insemination is used on most farms in most countries um where you make the bull make semen and then take it away put it in a fridge um and then uh artificially inseminate the cow which is kind of horrific when you think about it as well yeah that's that's i mean it's like a it's like a weird like forced sperm donor yeah i think i would probably categorize it as sexually abusing an animal yeah i think i would agree despite the fact that that's completely illegal to do with dogs it's completely legal to do with cows pigs other livestock so yeah so i think cognitive dissonance it is cognitive dissonance um yeah so of course um i don't think we're necessarily arguing about that i think that we can both agree that right now animals are heavily mistreated um i think yes yeah, so i think the point is like a queen there's only like out of like if you have 20 bees and only one of them is a queen bee um you're only going to have one queen bee and you have to like the the amount of basically the amount of babies that you can have is, is well i think look the commercial bee sector has figured this out and i think this is not something we need to talk about like how do you breed bees that's not really what we're here to talk about but yeah okay. uh shall we continue is there anything else you wanted to mention really um so this is we've all gone over this oh yeah so i think um specific focus on mammals when when vegans usually are talking about animals that you eat, it's usually mammals. And that's because mammals do make up a high percentage. Well, I would disagree. I think vegans care for all types of animals. This is why we don't eat honey, even though, you know, bees are very small. Um, and, you know, shellac, for example, was produced by um, the, I think, lac, yeah, female lac bug insect um, is where shellac's from. But, you know, vegans wouldn't use shellac if it, it's an ingredient as a food coloring or if it's, you know, used as a wood polish, for example, um, you know, I don't think we'd not go sit in a chair because that's shellac on it, but we'd probably wouldn't want to, you know, varnish our own furniture with shellac. So, you know, we, I think we care for like all types of animals that are, that are sentient really. Um, and I think to say that there's a specific focus on mammals, I think this is what we're saying to you is that you have a specific focus on the welfare of dogs and cats um, and not much else. And I think especially fish get really disregarded. And this is perhaps because of like Christian traditions of, you know, Jesus making fish and whatnot. Um, but fish are sen- and fish, sen- sentient fish feel pain. Tuna are huge. Like this is one thing I tell people a lot is that hu- tuna are actually ginormous fish. They're not like mini anchovies. Like they're actually like enormous bluefin tuna and the like. Um, and so I think there's, it's like, wrong to say that vegans only focus on mammals because that's completely untrue we definitely care about fish um and smaller animals as well yeah as, i mean that's why i said yeah you speci- but I, I like what i so number one yes uh fi- i think the reason why fish for some for some reason they have been society- societally regarded as for some I don't, I don't, and i'm not sure why this is as like less offensive environmentally and less offensive yeah like, which is completely or, untrue morally just to kill them like so people don't care um like because it's, it's you know it's like when you like look at like t- tuna and salmon like you look at the farms they're in it, they don't often like look as bad as they they, they don't have like the direct look they you and also there aren't as many yes. documentaries yes. about just like chopping off like fish heads as there are with chickens um i think well, the sea spiracy watch that if you haven't already yeah there is sea spiracy but like for every sea that's another kettle of fish for every sea spiracy there's a hundred um sushi the making of yeah, so but yeah, so, but like, I think for every conspiracy, there's at least like there's like ten documentaries about the normal meat industry about cows and chickens. Yeah, uh, one to recommend would be Dominion uh, or Land of Hope and Glory, depending which country you're in. Earthlings is a bit old, but still good. 
Yes, but like I think what I'm trying to say is like, um, I I don't think I've ever heard a vegan talk about like people eating amphibians or reptiles, and that's because of course in Western. But yeah, because that's really not very prevalent where we are. Like, what amphibians are you suggesting? Uh, in Western culture, we do not eat that. I think definitely um, in cultures that are not specifically Western related, there is there is like consumption of cro- of like. Uh, different types of reptiles, different types of amphibians. Uh, reptiles, I think crocodile. I, I, I know. Like, yeah, I haven't. I don't think I've eaten crocodile, but I've definitely been in places where crocodile was served. And I think at least one member of my family has eaten crocodile on one occasion. And apparently, it tastes like chicken, which is a horrible thing to kill a crocodile for. <laughs> Chewy chicken, like it's not worth. Uh, I've eaten like kudu and ostrich. Um, anyway, that's a diversion. Okay, but I think we'd care about the lives of those animals. It's just not something worth arguing about because most of the people we'd be arguing to don't eat amphibians or reptiles. Yeah. But I definitely don't think it defends carnism to say that we only talk about mammals. Yeah, no, and I agree. I, I think, but I just like there are definitely like I think in South America there's like there's quite high consumption of reptiles compared to like. Uh, they, yeah, maybe it's more local. Yeah. Um. So okay, I'll post I'll post this question too. Let's say there's a bunch of alligators and they are like, they, they have like a, they, their population remains constant, but they just go around and they like attack people. Um, would it be okay to kill these alligators and then eat their meat uh, because it's leftover? Like, you don't just like to instead of- It's a really interesting question. So let's assume that what you're saying basically is that um, it's necessary to cull the alligators in order to protect the humans in a way that eating meat isn't necessary to protect humans. Um, so it's necessary to kill the alligators to save the humans' lives, right? Yeah. Um, and I think it's a really interesting question, and it's very hypothetical, so like it doesn't actually have much to do with the vegan debate, but I'll, I'll have a think about it for you. So I think, I think the thing is, like, first of all, is it food safe? Wilf, can you please leave? We're trying to have a live debate. It's, it, yes, this is Theo. Wilf, how about you come on and make your appearance worthwhile? What are you doing? We're having a debate about veganism. Say hi. Hello. Hello. Okay, well, bye. Okay, the listeners are getting bored. Wolf, go away. Thanks. This Bye. This is fighting failure. This is fighting failure. Ah, they can see faces. Okay. Bye, oh. Wolf. <laughs> Wolf. Okay, the alligator question. Um, would it be food safe to eat the alligators? I don't know. I think what? from... Uh, no! They're dinosaurs. Okay, Wolf, bye. <laughs> yeah, I think so... Uh, this really reminds me of the backyard eggs argument, um, which I'll get on, which is slightly different because you know you are raising the chickens yourself, and I think it's immoral to eat backyard eggs, even if they're spare and even if they would otherwise rot. Well, can you please go away? No, I feel I should be part of this conversation as a vegetarian. No, I, this is between me and Theo. Okay. <laughs> Wilf, can you please go? I get to watch. Not from here. Okay, you can go over there. Mm-hmm. Go over there, please, Wilf. Bye bye. I bet you miss my face. Okay, yeah, so I think the backyard eggs argument is right that, you know, they'd other go eggs go to waste, but I think it's unethical because that's sort of saying that, you know, the hens are here to produce eggs for us when they're not, they're, those eggs are for the hen and it's wrong to view them as for us, you know. We love dogs because because of who they are. We don't, but even if you're having backyard eggs, you don't have the hens because you love them for who you are. You have the hens because you think they can produce something for you and even if they would otherwise go to waste, they're not there for you. I think the alligator question is slightly different because um, you're not farming those alligators um, and considering that they're already dead, you know, I honestly don't know. I personally wouldn't eat it because I, I just don't eat meat, right? But um, I don't honestly, like, there's also a question of are there other ways that you could repel the alligators without needing to kill them? So it's a bit of a strange situation. I wouldn't eat it, but I, like, from an I animal... Suggest. No. Go away. I think it's- to the animal to eat its carcass and that it should be buried in a memorial place. Yeah, I mean, it's really, really hypothetical question, but I think, you know, I wouldn't. I feel like it's kind of wrong to eat an animal, but I feel like also um, it's a, it's an edge case. Like, it's... It doesn't have... Well, it has animal welfare issues, honestly, if you're killing them, but it's a really interesting question and I really don't know, And I, but it doesn't really have any weight in terms of arguing against veganism, of course. Yeah, I think, but I, I brought up the idea of like backyard hens, right? Mm-hmm. So let's say you keep hens as pets and like you like you genuinely like think of them as like, I think it's like the same way that you would treat a cat, right? Um, they have eggs and some, some eggs are fertilized and some aren't. What, do, what, well, are they? And do you have a rooster? 
like like if you have a rooster, sure you would have. I mean, I have a personally. I only know some. The, I have a friend um, who has a rooster and a chicken, so like the rooster goes and fertilizes the egg. So that's specifically what I. What Interesting, because most people who have hens uh, only have hens. So yeah, if you only have hens, like I don't know what else is going to happen with the eggs if you just leave them there like yeah so um what's interesting is that hens uh, have been selectively bred to breed like 300 eggs in a year that's why they basically lay one every day but uh you know in the wild like the guinea fowl that they're descended from lay about 12 to 20 eggs a year so we can we can say that hens have been selectively bred to produce so many more eggs and this of course causes biological problems with uh you know the nutrients that they're getting they don't get enough calcium that can cause osteoporosis and other sort of deficiencies wilf can you please leave okay please you can watch this later can i say what Oh, yeah, yeah, get a microphone. Hello. Um, uh, what was I going to say? I think that, like, um, doesn't it hurt to produce an egg? I mean, like, I'm a human, so I know I must have come out of mummy's tummy. Wouldn't that hurt? I mean, we can't say this uh, because we aren't hens, but uh, uh, for a hen, a fertilized egg is the same as an unfertilized egg in what it feels like to lay. And we can say that they pro- used to produce them rarely. Uh, whether or not it hurts to produce... I'm, I'm not exactly sure, but it can cause certain health problems. Okay, well, can you please leave now? He show and I, uh, not he show, Theo and I having a talk. Um, so yeah, in, if the, if you leave the hen to uh, lay eggs, it'll actually form a clutch. And this is what the hen wants to do is it wants to have like a bunch of eggs that it can then sit on, even if they're not actually fertilized. Um, and if the hen was ab- is able to lay a clutch, it'll actually reduce its egg uh, production, which is good for the hen's health. Um, and then also, you know, maybe... Uh, eat, feeding their eggs back to the hen means that they can get some of their lost nutrients back as well, which is making the best of a bad situation. Um, and hens uh, have been trained to actually do this of their own accord as well. Um, but if you know if they're just going to go to waste and they're just there, uh, like I said before, if you have them, if you're taking those eggs, you're saying that the animal is there to produce for you, and that is that you're saying that's your thing to take when it's really not. It's it's the hen's egg, and you don't really have a right to eat it. I, I, I think I disagree on the fact that you are saying, like, you would immediately default to the fact that, that the hen is there for your uh, enjoyment in that regard. I think that the hen could be there for your enjoyment in the fact that they are a hen and you like them. Like, they could be a hen that you like. You could like some of their personality. And chickens do have personalities. You could like their personality. You could kind of, like, you could think they're cute. You could, like, you could like setting up, like, pens for them. I don't think that would necessarily, as soon as you take an egg from them, like, necessarily you like, straight to, like, Okay, you're there for their for your consumption of their eggs. I, I disagree. Um, right, but like the hen doesn't make eggs for us, and the the hen makes eggs for the hen, right? It's it's similar to human ovulation, but also different because they're a very different species. But it's not the hens aren't there for us to take. They're not there for us to commodify. We shouldn't be commodifying their products, and I I think that's just. It's unethical. However, I must admit, I'm not as well versed in the backyard eggs argument as I would like to be, but I am convinced that it's wrong to eat backyard eggs. Um, should we move on? I understand. Yeah. Okay. Let's move on. Um, what is next? Um, I'm just I'm just looking at the document you hear, and you're saying like vegan dieters and like vegan might be healthy. Um, hopefully, it is healthy. But you're right, it's not a health diet. It's not a diet. It's a lifestyle. Um, about yes, not eating animals. I agree. I agree. Um, I, I also agree. I think it's, it's just specifically commenting on that it it, it can have health risks, which are dangerous. Um, Why veganism is pure stupidity, scientifically, morally, and ethically? Yeah. So I, isn't I, moral and ethical the, like the same sort of thing? I specifically chose this 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 um thing because I thought it would be interesting to have a look at and just kind of like dissect. It, it clearly has a very um. <laughs> provocative title and that it says why veganism is pure stupidity and i i, I disagree but let's i, I want to have a look at why why do they why why would anyone think this what, okay what? yeah so i just looking at the first paragraph it seems relatively reasonable a uh, practice of abstaining from the use of animal products particularly in diet but as associated philosophy rejects the commodity status of sentient animals yep is it anything new recognizing that it's not a fad um um but they say it's saying that eating basically the same way until the last tens of thousands uh right uh, it, you know, old homie sapiens didn't eat nearly as much meat as the average American does now. Yeah, I think it also is is saying that factory farming is are horrible. So that the- this is this is an argument a lot of carnists use is that they reject factory farming. Just like that, like ninety nine percent of chickens are factory farmed. Uh, I yeah, it's kind of yeah. It's hard to make up for the fact that they are now. I think you could, in theory, um, if you just reduce the amount of meat that people eat, and then also um, don't play with the light. Well, please, can you just leave? Okay. Okay, so if you reduce the amount of meat that people eat, and also that if you reduce, um, if you if you reduce 
So you reduce the amount of people uh, meat people eat, you improve conditions. Of course, everyone has less meat, but you're not you're not factory farming them in the same way. And you could, in theory, have people have like some meat a year and then still be able to say, OK, that meat wasn't factory farmed. I think that um, some people. But, but the, yeah, I don't think factory farming changes the ethics of whether it's all right to kill an animal. Uh, I think it does because if you, but like the killing is the action really that we think is immoral. Like I think it's definitely wrong to abuse animals in factory farms, but I think it's just wrong to kill an animal unnecessarily. It's in my opinion. And it's definitely not humane because it's not kind to un- end an a- or shorten an animal's life just because you value its flesh and the taste. It's okay. So okay, you you continue to say this, yet I I w- w- I don't think we agree on the fact that it's necessarily for for the taste but um, you do agree that it's not necessarily for consumption but like we talked less before let's not get back to this it, it, point. It, it's it's in my opinion um will do not play with that line i've told you before i've told i will tell you again can you please leave now it, it's it's in my yeah i am recording and this is like live so this is live? well it's not live live but i'm not going to edit it bye it, it's bye. i'm really sorry about that my brother's being annoying it's in my opinion that the torture of animals is far worse than killing themselves. If say if you if you sexually abuse and torture your niece horrifically for twenty years, and then uh, someone else kills her, I think that you would be the worst person. Oh yeah, no, for sure. But if you think about it, like there's there's three options here, right? There's uh, cause a lot of suffering to an animal, cause oh I'm not going to use my middle finger, um, cause a lot of suffering for an animal cause a small amount of suffering for an animal or cause no suffering to an animal i think like that third option is the most like well that makes the most sense really but you you aren't causing no suffering for the animal well right so factory farming is a lot of suffering yes high welfare farming is still some suffering and eating plant-based is no deliberate animal suffering with perhaps some accidental crop deaths no deliberate i i mean you sure think- we're not deliberately killing any animals and we're not deliberately paying anyone to slaughter animals it doesn't matter what you're deliberately doing it, it if it still causes an offset in something that's still an issue that you would be causing even if it's not deliberate or not and i what i'm trying to say is but what, what, what i think an argument would be is that and like animals when left by themselves they roll over in their own feces they but w- are you disabilitating the animals for rolling in their own feces is there is there really a problem with that like does that mean that they don't have moral value just because they engage in a practice that we deem disgusting no i but like they they go uh, no no that's not where there we go because they get serious they get serious they would get serious they can get serious they can get give themselves serious illnesses they can hurt themselves badly and on a domesticated farm we're we're back to this argument they're talking about before with the wildebeest and all not so can we move on to a different point oh let's have a look through this i could list all the numerous studies from peer-reviewed scientific journals that support the fact don't read it out, right? We don't want to get copyright strikes. Okay, basically, what it's saying is that um, people don't necessarily. Ex- what I think the point is is that basically, chemically and biologically, uh, like we are all parts of the gut of the guts of an exploded star. So I don't necessarily agree with this argument. It's more philosophical, but um, we, we are. Don't we, see that how that justifies right, eating animals. Right now, we're being eaten alive. Is kind of what they're saying. That's not true. That is true. Bacteria are eating us alive. They're not eating us alive. That's not true at all. Bacteria, we live in a symbiotic relationship with the bacteria yes. in our gut. And to say that we can justify eating animals because we're being eaten by bacteria? That's what they're saying, though. That's what he's... I think well, they're wrong. That's their argument is that we're in a symbiotic relationship with the bacteria. With we're not in a symbiotic relationship with farmed animals. But I think that's like... that's that. I agree, but that's, that's kind of the argument they're making. That the symbiosis... Um, yeah, well, why does morality come into play when we decide when we decide to consume at different points on the food chains rather than just the lower rungs? Life is a pattern of sentience that we observe. The more intelligent we find it to be, the proportionally greater our prescribed need to preserve it. And then the question is, why? Okay, well, this is this is bogus, right? Yeah, it is bogus. But like, I think it's so. Like, it's what's the point? Or, it's an interesting philosophical question. But I think it's a bad philosophical oh. question because I think there's definitely no symbiosis in our relationship with farmed animals um and also like the food chain argument is like basically saying might makes right which i think is also like i don't think you agree with might makes right do you no yeah okay uh, do you have any other points or should we end because i think this has been like one and a half hours now yeah i think it's i think this is pretty good any other final points um i mean so personally i don't agree with a lot of the things i said today i just kind of wanted to see like well, if I said them, what would be the reaction? How could I combat that? I mean, I think it's always best to think about things critically so that even if, you, like, you agree with something, you can think about, like, maybe what some of the issues with it. Some of the, but, like, 
overall, I think that veganism yeah. is better than not veganism. I also think that eating local is better than, uh, eat, or eating in your general vicinity is better than eating mass produced. I love how you replaced eating local with eating in your general vicinity to try and avoid my retorts, but thank you so much for a good debate. Would you like to shake hands at the end and make sure it's visible? Uh, we'll sanitize afterwards for sure. Thank you so much for coming on and I'll see you hopefully for another debate sometime in the future. Goodbye. Thank you. Stop that recording and has it been recording all this time in Adobe Edition? You